Good morning, boys and girls. Today's story is titled, Let My People Go. Let my people go. That's what Moses said as he stood in front of Pharaoh. He was probably very nervous. He didn't want to be in Egypt. He wanted to be back home in the desert with his sheep and his wife and his kids. But there he was standing in front of Pharaoh saying exactly what God had told him to say. Let my people go. And do you know what Pharaoh said? He said, no. Rats, okay. It was time for that neat trick with the scary stick snake. So Moses threw down his walking stick and boom, God turned it into a snake and back into a stick. Let my people go, he said again, and Pharaoh said, no. Double rats. Then God told Moses it was time to do something even more powerful than the stick snake. So he began to send plagues one at a time to show Pharaoh just how powerful he was. A plague is a really bad thing like bugs or a bad rash or a really big storm, stuff you don't want happening in your town. God told Moses to dip his walking stick in the big river in Egypt called the Nile. When his stick touched the river, all the water turned to blood. Let my people go, Moses said again, and Pharaoh said, no. Look at the blood. And there's him, Moses putting his stick in. Then God said to Moses, hold up your stick. We're going to make frogs. And boom, frogs, millions of them everywhere. The fields were covered with frogs. The roads were covered with frogs. There were frogs in people's houses, even in their beds. Let my people go, Moses said, trying not to step on a frog. And Pharaoh said, no. Next, God sent gnats, tiny little bugs that go everywhere. And then a sickness that killed all the farm animals. Next, all the Egyptians got sores on their skin, itchy, ouchy sores all over. There was hail, big balls of ice that fell from the sky and knocked down all the corn and wheat and rice plants. And then locusts, big bugs that like, looked like grasshoppers and ate all the crops that weren't killed by the hail. Each time, Pharaoh said, no, these plagues, the frogs and the flies and the locusts and hail weren't enough, so God turned out the lights. Egypt actually went dark. It was middle of the night dark in the middle of the day. The Egyptians couldn't see anything. Let my people go, Moses said to Pharaoh. At least he thought he was talking to Pharaoh. It was so dark, it was hard to tell. But a voice from the darkness said no. Finally, God knew exactly what he would have to do to change Pharaoh's mind. God told Moses it was time for the Egyptians to know how powerful he was. I am going to send an angel who will kill all the oldest sons of the Egyptians, he said, and then Pharaoh will let my people go. Moses thought hard about this terrible thing. How will the angel know which sons are the children of Israel, Moses asked. God gave Moses a sign. Each Israelite family was to prepare a lamb for a special meal and then take some of the blood of that lamb and put it over the door of their house. When the angel saw the blood of the lamb over the door, the angel would pass by that house. Here are some pictures of the plagues that came, the frogs, the locust, the gigantic hail, and then over there is how dark it was. Oh, goodness sakes, boys and girls, I can't imagine. Moses and the Israelites were unsure, but they followed God's direction. They put the blood of the lamb over their doors. They ate the special meal, which is now called Passover. They did everything just the way God had said, and then they went to bed, but they didn't get much sleep. That night an angel passed through all the streets of Egypt, and in the morning all the oldest sons of the Egyptians were dead. The Egyptians' moms and dads cried and cried. Even Pharaoh cried because his son had died also. It was terrible. When he was done crying, Pharaoh called for Moses, and you can guess what he said. He said, instead of no, go. God showed the Egyptians just how powerful he was. He showed the children of Israel that he heard their cries and that he would keep the promises he had made to their father Abraham. But that's not all. God also gave a hint about his third promise, the blessing for the whole world. Some day, all of God's children would be saved from death. All it would take would be the blood of a very, very special lamb. And do you boys and girls know what lamb that that is? That is Jesus. So we even hear about Jesus in the Old Testament, um, which is so awesome, and it just shows us how great he is. Okay, fun facts from this story. The Passover meal shared to honor this event consists of six items. Matzah, which is unleavened bread, representing the Israelites' quick exodus from Egypt. 
Marar and Chazaret, bitter herbs and romaine lettuce representing the bitterness of slavery in Egypt. Cherosis, a sweet paste of fruit and nuts representing the mortar used by the slaves to build in Egypt. Carpas, a vegetable such as celery symbolizing hope dipped in salt water to rep represent the tears shed by the Israelites. Zaraha, a roasted lamb representing the sacrifice. Please don't be mad if I'm butchering these words. <laughs> Betza, a roasted egg, a symbol of life. And some friends, even to this day, still have the Passover meal and think about how, how special it was and what all these things mean as far as God's promises and, and rescuing them out of Egypt. Can you name all the plagues, boys and girls? I want to know if you guys can and write them down and send them in to me. And what did the plague show the Egyptians and the Israelites about God? Well... It showed them that God takes care of his people, that God fulfills his promise, and that God is always there for us. And now let's bow in prayer. Dear God, thank you for always protecting us by your great power. Amen. Well, boys and girls, now they're out of Egypt, and they are heading toward the promised land, and we will learn about that tomorrow. So until then, see you later.